So this is, this is the question. <laughs> um, and I think it's a lot of it has to do with semantics. Right. Um, so I think it means a lot of different things to different people. Agreed. I like to think of it as after a cancer diagnosis, um, everything changes. Um, and so survivorship is about meeting those unique needs um, after the diagnosis for a, a patient and all of their loved ones, caregivers and, and all of those who love them, um, through cancer, with cancer, beyond cancer. I, I think what I love most about survivorship um, is that you can you know, we do such a good job of finding treatment, especially this net community is amazing. Um, big yeah, big time. I think we do such a great job of, of the physical symptoms and they mm -hmm. definitely need to be addressed. But I think sometimes from the medical perspective, we don't understand the impact that this disease has on an individual and their families um, when they step outside of, of our you know, clinic walls, um, it dramatically impacts them. And I think we need to do a better job in supporting them. So to me, survivorship is just kind of this overall encompassing term just to meet whatever needs there might be. And, and that's really broad. It's really, really sure. broad. Um, emotional, spiritual, um, occupational. Yes. Yeah. It, there's no, there's, there's nothing that I think is, uh, uh, not fair game. I love palliative care. I'm just going to let's establish <laughs> what that is for those at home. So palliative care is a team that I actually think gets kind of a bad rap. Um, I think a bad marketing actually is, is probably what it is. Um, I think a lot of people associate palliative with hospice um, and it is hospice is only a portion of what palliative care does. So palliative care are experts in symptom management. Um, and so if we need to, uh, to control symptoms, control pain, control, they're excellent about, um, you know, we'll see in clinic patients who have a lot of nausea. If we can't get that under control with our, you know, our little toolbox of tricks, um, we send patients to palliative um, to, to help with that. So they are expert in managing symptom management. Um, I personally like to run regular treatment and palliative treatment. Um, if patients are struggling with a lot of, a lot more symptoms or even symptoms from treatment, um, I like to run that parallel to, to kind of the, the treatment that we're giving. Let's say that's PRT or chemo, whatever. I like to run that uh, sooner and have our patients kind of meet the team um, and do things in parallel. I think that just uh, the collaborative approach is really, really helpful. Um, so I'm not sure if that's, that's answering her question, um, but I think, I think sooner the better. If you're, having, if you're having symptoms, I think the sooner the better. And Maybe I'll go even further to say, I think one of the most important things for patients to do is to figure out who your team is, right? So who do you, who is that? Uh, what are the things that you're really struggling with or need help with? Mm -hmm. um, identify those, that might be a dietitian, that might be a physical therapist, that might need to be someone in palliative, um, you know, someone to really help with some pain control. I think you got to identify your players and your team, right? Get your that. peeps together yeah. and, um, and kind of identify. And you can do that in, in the healthcare world. And you can mm -hmm. also do that in your personal world, right? Who, Definitely. who, who is, who are your peeps in your community? Yeah. So I had this, uh, this patient a long time ago, um, who just told me the most incredible story. So she said she got a diagnosis cancer diagnosis, and she was one of these, she self-proclaimed type A individuals. Sure, I get Got it. a diagnosis and immediately said, okay, I'm gonna get my team together. So this is the day she got diagnosed, called all her friends, you're gonna do this, you're doing pickup, you're gonna do mm -hmm. all of these people. 
I spent the whole day um, lining all these people up. And then she tells me I was laying in bed at 11 o'clock that night. And after telling all of these people, like, you're going to be my army, right? You're going to protect me. You're going to be my army. I just did a great job. And I get a phone call and it's my best friend who's in charge of my, like her media director, her communications director. She just, and she said, my friend says to me, I, I know that you put your whole army together today. And I know now that you're up worrying about your cancer diagnosis, but I need you to envision your army is now surrounding you and protecting mm. you while you sleep. So go to sleep like rest with that. Mm. And I still get goosebumps. I did too. I just did. Because it, it's such like imagery is so important as well. But, but I think, I think when you, when you allow other people in to, to help protect, you can also like that just protects, protects you. But it's just for me was such a good, uh, really vivid picture for me. Um, and just Easter. And my patient said, you know, I, I slept, I slept well. I, yeah. I, I got That's my huge. army and, um, and I slept well. So I think your peeps, I think you need your, your that peeps. Good. And- In survivorship, we talk about a treatment summary and care plan, and this is a hallmark document. Um, it can be made by the patient. It can be made by a provider. I provide one in my clinic for patients. Um, but what it is, it should kind of outline for you what, what we should be following. So in Geetha's case, is this something like I need to be following with a CT scan for six months? I think it's very appropriate to bring that in and ask your provider, like, what is it? And, and with the understanding that this is a dynamic process, right? This, this can change, change based on treatment, changed um, with disease progression, regression, whatever. But I think having a care plan clearly stating what things am I tracking, right? What it's, it's like our other question about 5-HIAA. How often should I be doing that? Mm-hmm. If we're checking my heart, how often should I be getting an echocardiogram? How, these things allow us to have control um, of, of, of a sense of control of yeah. what, uh, what our disease is and, and kind of you know, the treatment of that. So a care plan is really key and I would encourage um, encourage her to um, kind of reach out to her own pr- provider and ask that. That can be very different depending on, you know, what, what your disease uh, is and where it's located. So, I want to encourage patients to, um, to write down questions that they have mm-hmm. and ask their providers about that. Um, And that can be because it kind of um, the sense of control about like what is happening to me, what can I expect from that is, is very much a survivorship issue Mm -hmm. Um, and to open the communication and develop that trust. And these things should be known um, with your healthcare team. And it's okay to ask. It's, it's, completely okay to ask. Yeah. Um, even if it seems, um, you know, something that you didn't know, or, uh, you know, you're afraid to ask. I think yeah. it's, it's really important. When you ask me that question, I think about resiliency, right? Mm. Like being resilient. And I think there's some components of resilience, resiliency that are kind of critical for, for patients to like shift into survivorship and, and kind of like we were talking about at the beginning to reframe um, kind of going forward. Um, I think it's really helpful. We'll go back to stories, really helpful to talk about stories. And that can be through support groups that can be um, through advocacy from volunteering. I think those individuals who can reframe a cancer diagnosis as an opportunity 
to reprioritize, um, search themselves to find what's valuable, um, you know, uh, improve relationships, learn about themselves, a little more openness about those things, really seem to develop resiliency um, over time and are more, this is just anecdotal, just more able to then kind of mount each obstacle or barrier that's to come with uh, more hope and balance mm -hmm. to that, right? So I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah. um, I, think, I think that's kind of the key, the key um, is to, to, there's something to learn, learn about yourself, learn about others. Mm -hmm.